Definitely not on IMAX either. <laughs> really? Have you seen it yet? On IMAX? No, I haven't. I just, we saw it, Nancy and I watched it on Wednesday because we want to make yeah, sure we put it on the screen. I the... want to see it on IMAX. It's pretty awesome. It's a whole other perspective of how I'm you're into the movie. I'm sure. Um, so Taylor, tell me what it is you think that makes these books and these movies such like a cultural phenomenon uh, right now. It's a good question. I think the fans would be the best person to an people to answer that, but um, I think it's because anybody and everybody can relate to them. I mean, whether you're a guy or girl, any age, you can relate to these characters in the story. Um, have you? How do you feel um, your your characters grown? over these movies and, and the arc of him so far through Eclipse, which obviously there's still farther to go, but. Yeah, Jacob's grown quite a lot. Uh, in, in Twilight, he was his old self. He was this happy-go-lucky kid, not dealing with any problems, crushing on a girl. Um, in New Moon, he's in his transformation stage. He's becoming this new person. He's struggling with that. And in Eclipse, he's matured quite a bit. He's come to know his new self. Um, and he struggles. He's, I'd say he's, he's emotional in Eclipse. He, he becomes frustrated because he gets this close to having what he wants, but once again gets told no over and over again. What was it like doing these scenes with Kristen where you, you know, you sort of in the other movie you love her, and in this movie there's this, this kiss, this, these two kisses, actually. The, I know, there's two. Um, First one was a little awkward because uh, it's, it's not fun kissing somebody when they don't want to kiss you back. It's a little weird. <laughs> um, the second one was good. I mean, we were on top of the mountain with the beautiful background. It was like the ultimate movie kiss. Um, and I mean, yeah, we're, we're super close. So I wouldn't say it was awkward, um, but as soon as we'd finish kissing every single time, she'd like look at me and go, we just kissed. And I'd be like, yeah, we did. All right, let's go again. <laughs> Um, and also with the, with the love triangle, obviously your relationship with Rob's character in this movie with Edward Cullen is very different. Because yes. I feel like up until now it's been easy to hate him. And at some point in this movie there's this moment where you sort of hate him but you have to understand him and vice versa. Yeah, and that moment um, takes place really in the tent. And that's why the tent scene's my, my favorite. Um, I feel like it kind of sums up the entire movie. It's the first moment where Jacob and Edward are able to connect and say, you know what, as much as we hate each other, I kind of understand you, I kind of respect you, so let's let's put all of this aside and, uh, you know, fight for Bella. Um, but yeah, the hardest thing about hating Edward in Eclipse is I'm playing opposite Rob, and he's such a nice, friendly, funny guy. That would probably be the biggest challenge about this film was having to hate Edward. Well, I think interestingly, this movie actually has you know the love that's universal is great, but there's something about this where two people from two different worlds really have to come together for a common goal. Yeah, which is a bigger, even universal theme in some ways. Yeah, um, was that sort of? I mean, do you see that yourself in, in the movies and in the storytelling? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel bad. I feel bad for all the characters. Um, I wouldn't want to be any one of them. But I feel really bad for Bella because she's being torn between these two guys that are both madly in love with her, but they're complete opposites, and they hate each other. But you're right. Um, they their number one thing is to protect Bella. So they have to put all those differences aside and say, you know what, we got we got to do this no matter what it takes. And so I know you haven't seen the film in IMAX yet. Have you heard the soundtrack yet? I've heard the soundtrack. I oh, have. Yes, I have, but not in the movie. Because what do you think? What do you think of it? Because I think it's very interesting that these soundtracks really are kind of keep it kind of edgier. Uh -huh. Because you know they go very more alternative rock, and I think some people's if they were thinking about this, you know, would go very poppy music based on who the original sort of fan base was. Right. Um, anything you think interesting about? It? Yeah, definitely. I I mean. We're very lucky to have these, you know, musicians behind us. We always have such an incredible soundtrack, and I think it helps the movie a lot. 